thought I would do the notices first this morning and then we can prepare ourselves for worship. So firstly, some bands of marriage to call on behalf of St. Mary's Harley. And I love the fact that the band's book that I'm reading from began its life in 1891. So a little bit of history that I'm holding in my hands this morning. I published the bands of marriage between Simon Timothy Banks, previous marriage dissolved of St. Mary's Harley, and Juliet Helen Hode, previous marriage dissolved of St. Mary's Harley. This is for the second time of asking, if any of you any just cause impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it now. So thank you for bands. Secondly, it's official that we have twinned with our toilet in Africa and we have a certificate to prove it and this will go up in our holy loo here when we spend a safe distance penny in the days to come. So uh, bless all those on the environmental group that have worked towards twinning our loo in Africa. So thank you for that. On a pastoral note, can I ask you to please think of the Reverend Henry Watson's family on Tuesday. Henry's funeral will be in church here at quarter to two, but by nature of the restrictions that we find ourselves in, obviously um, those that would like to attend in the normal sense are being prevented on this occasion. But if you could quietly think of Henry at quarter to two on Tuesday, I personally would be grateful as we give thanks that he's being promoted to glory. So on this 18th Sunday after Trinity, we rejoice that whatever the date, whatever the day, God is with us. Whatever our background, God is with us. Whatever mood we're in, God is with us. Whatever may be troubling us, God is with us. So shall we take just a few moments to be still as we come into Christ's presence this day to worship him, to break bread together, and to give thanks for his steadfast love. Oh, uh-huh. 
so our service this morning can either be followed on your portable device or on your laminated plastic card and if you'd care to respond to the words in the bold type where appropriate. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we acknowledge sometimes that we forget that God so loved the world that Jesus died to save us from our sins. Let us take a moment to recall that love and remember the times we have fallen short of being the people we could be. The temptations of this world have sometimes been too strong. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The promises of the next world has sometimes seemed a fantasy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The troubles of today's world have sometimes seemed no business of ours. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect and Readings for the 18th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we remain seated for our epistle reading. The reading is taken from Philippians chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with you, Odia, and I plead with Sintiki to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learnt or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 
I could ask you please if you're able to stand for our gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to the chief priests and the Pharisees in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who'd been invited to the wedding banquet but they would not come. Again, he sent out other slaves, saying, Tell those who've been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called and few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak this day in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen, if you care to be seated. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling considerably COVID-weary now. I dread Thursdays when Hereford at five o'clock send me the next edict. And of course, we're all on tender hooks because of what St. Boris is going to say uh, tomorrow evening with a predicted spike in cases once more. The people I felt most sorry for during this period of COVID are those obviously in the situation of preparing for a funeral or a wedding. Although it could be advantageous if you're one of those families who can choose your friends and not your family because you can select who comes. With the whole business of groups of six and not being able to have receptions or funeral wakes adds to the challenges and the stress. But I wish to pay tribute to our crematorium staff at both Emstry and Telford, who are working so hard to care for families at this difficult time. And I have to say that live streaming services to those who are unable to attend has truly made a huge difference when it comes to pastoral care and engagement. But I appreciate it's not quite the same as attending in person. With all this in mind, today's gospel speaks of God's kingdom as a party, but with no restrictions, and the only instruction being, pay attention to the invite. It is interesting that the people who were invited just would not come. Some of them would not take it seriously, and went off and did their own thing, as if a person would say, sorry, I can't come to your party, I've had a better offer. And others seem to have been insulted to be invited, that they beat up and even murdered those who came to fetch them. What was it about the party that made it so unappealing? You've heard me recite before 
that profound poem by R.S. Thomas about the kingdom that I simply love, that I think connects so well with our passage from Holy Scripture for this morning and our reminder of those words. It's a long way off, but inside it there are quite different things going on. Festivals at which the poor man is king and the consumptive is healed. Mirrors in which the blind look at themselves and love looks at them back. And industry is for mending the bent bones and the minds fractured by life. It's a long way off. But to get there takes no time and admission is free. If you purge yourself of desire and present yourself with your need only and the simple offering of your faith, green as a leaf. As much as this is true, a welcoming feast for all is one of Jesus' favourite ways of speaking about the kingdom of God. But there are a few disturbing features to this particular description. Jesus really stresses God's anger at being rejected. The host in the story is absolutely furious with those who would not come. And as for the man who does not come, but wears the wrong, but does come, but wears the wrong clothes, he is cast out into the darkness. So what on earth is going on? Can anybody tell me? It's very difficult to see because you've got your face masks on. I think it hinges on complacency on our part. Yes, God truly does offer us a place in the kingdom, promising to fulfill everyone's needs, to wipe away every tear from our eye and remove guilt and shame. But God is not a magician or a fairy godmother with a tutu and a wand and a tiara on his head. As one spiritual writer put it, faith can move mountains, but don't be surprised if God hands you a shovel. He is a God who invites us not simply to take our places at his banquet, but actively prepares and welcomes us in beginning his work of building the kingdom of God, both in our lives and in our world in which we live. I'm also very fond of St. Augustine. And he also said when it comes to the wedding banquet, the man in the story is ejected from the banquet because the garment which he lacks is one essential for the kingdom. And that garment, of course, is love. Why else would St. Paul say in those profound words of Colossians, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And finally, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Today is Safeguarding Sunday, and it would be remiss of me if I didn't acknowledge the ICSA report of the Church of England into child sexual abuse by clergy and church officers. And people are right to make light of the Christian faith and see us as a bunch of hypocrites, and that the church is seen as an ineffective body of people who are nothing more than a glorified social club, who individuals are intent on abusing their position of power and authority to mask their sins in ritual and mystery for the sake of taking advantage of the most vulnerable. That was certainly the case in this instance. However, for all its faults, and there are many that call us to true repentance and fall on our knees. The church, as the means of communicating the Christian faith, is certainly not something to be made light of. 
For if the Christian faith is to be true, then it is quite literally a matter of life and death for us all. Victims of abuse or genuine hurt from the church are right at one level to hold the church in contempt, especially when the institution has been intent on protecting itself rather than the people it should be protecting. Other people oppose the church and the faith for which it stands with a real loathing and hatred, like the people who murdered the slaves in the parable. Others find themselves in church but not really knowing why they come, perhaps coming out of habit rather than the need, thinking they can be a Christian without letting it touch them, like the man without the wedding garment. As I've reflected on this parable this week, one thing I've learned is the parable tells us that how we respond to God's invitation is vitally important. As members of the church, as people at the party, let us make sure that we do our part to make the invitation clear. Amen. And so, if you're able, if you care to stand for the affirmation of faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So shall we allow our thoughts this day to turn to prayer. We sit or kneel for our time of intercession. Trusting in the promise of salvation, we give thanks for all the good things in our lives and pray for God's help for the church, the world, and ourselves. Giving thanks for the worldwide church, we pray that all Christians may keep the promises made at their baptism to turn to Christ and follow his example. Lord, in your mercy, giving thanks for all who work for peace and justice. We pray that world leaders may keep the promises they make to serve their people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our giving thanks for all who comfort those who suffer. We pray that adequate resources may be promised and provided for those in need. Lord, in your mercy, giving thanks for those in our lives who always keep their promises to us. We pray that people who lack that human support may know God's presence. Lord, in your mercy, giving thanks for the promise of eternal life, we remember those we love who now rest in peace. Remembering in our thoughts the families and friends of the Reverend Henry Waston. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our giving thanks for the promise of eternal life, we remember those we love who now rest in peace. Amen. Reliable, dependable, trustworthy God, you promise to hear us when we pray in faith. And so we thank you for hearing our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And so we stand for the peace. And may I respectfully mind you that obviously we're not able to share the peace in the same way, but you're most welcome to give one another a holy nod. I've noticed this one is quite popular, or you can just stand quietly and absorb the peace of Christ. Paul wrote, keep on doing the things that you have learned, and the God of peace will be with you. And so the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
as the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside and now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh, and as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels, with archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these your gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Milberga and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We sit or kneel, and as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. Jesus,
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you, here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace, and here a pledge of future glory is given, when we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you, our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Before the final blessing, can I remind you that next Sunday is the Feast of St. Luke, and I'm delighted that Dr. Mike Innes, our local GP in Telford and Church Warden of Shyton, will be offering us an address next Sunday morning at half past nine to reflect on his experiences of being a doctor, a Christian, and COVID. And that will be next Sunday morning at half past nine. So if I could ask you to please stand for the final blessing again, if you're able. May you accept with joy God's loving invitation May you reject the world's distractions and temptation. And may you give thanks for the promise of salvation and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those you love and those who are dear to you this day, this new week and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Do you care to be seated for our final hymn?
And so may our Blessed Lady pray for us. May St. Milberga pray for us. May the saints of God pray for us. May the angels of God surround us to protect us and may the Lord Jesus give us his blessing of peace both now and always. Amen.